Hello, welcome to Paul's Take. And today we're gonna to compare the Tesla Roadster to the Lotus Avaya. I think I'm pronouncing that right. So everybody's gotta to try to beat the king. The king right now is Tesla. They are using some kind of alien technology, I'm sure of it, to make them heads over tails better than everybody else. Heads over, anyways. They're better than everybody else. On on the electric motors and their batteries and and their performance wise in that sense. Not saying handling per se, but like I say, power, range, they are the king. You gotta beat the king if you wanna be, uh, you know, relevant, really. So Lotus, which has performance cars, are, uh, which is beautiful cars, by the way. If they can't beat the Tesla Roadster, then why do they really need to exist? Or why does any other company that does performance cars, why do, they really, why do they really need to exist if Tesla is beating them with their basic sedans? So everybody's playing catch up because everything is going electric, which is good. It's great for the environment, great for the air. So Lotus has come up with their Avaya. And let's just do a comparison. Let's get right on to it. So, what I, need, what I know now is, it seems, I don't know, I almost want to believe that Lotus is lying, that they're holding back on their numbers because they're claiming that their Lotus can, has 2,000 horsepower. That's a lot more horsepower than everything out there, right? Yet, it only does 0 to 60 in about three seconds. That doesn't seem right. I wonder if it's a four-wheel drive. Is it all-wheel drive? Let's go look that up real quick. Yes, of course. It has 200 horsepower and it's four-wheel drive. So you can take it off-roading. Hey. Okay, so they're saying it has 200 horsepower, all-wheel drive, yet can only do 0 to 60. And you know they have a lot of torque. I couldn't find the numbers for the torque anywhere. But, you know, electric has tons of torque. So I think they're holding back on the numbers. Because that's about as fast as a lot of modern gasoline-powered motors or vehicles. So, anyway, so they're saying they can do it in three seconds. I think what they're doing is they're under-promising, over-delivering. But we'll, we'll find out. Anyway, so <clears throat> the Tesla Roadster can do 0 to 60. They're claiming, well, initially claimed 1.9 seconds. Now they're saying it's going to be 2.1 seconds unless you get the their... I don't know, there's a advanced model, what do you call it? Like the rocket or the supercharger or another, I don't know. There's another version they could do it, supposed to do it in nine point, in 1.9 seconds, but we'll just say, we'll just say two seconds. We'll go right down the middle. Okay, so Tesla Roadster has a claimed top speed of 250 miles an hour and the Lotus a little above, this thing could do over 200. The Tesla range is considerably more at 620 mile range, whereas Lotus only has a 250 mile range. Now, really, uh, I talked about this in another video, video that range in a, in a car like that is fine. I mean, really, if you can get a solid 100 mile range out of your, your, your Lotus, then you're straight. And also, what Lotus is saying, they have some kind of advanced charging system. Hold on a second. That they can charge their whole vehicle in a matter of, I think it was nine minutes, which is considerably faster than what Tesla can do it. So that puts them apart from everybody else, their, their new fancy charger system. The Tesla Roadster has four seats. The Lotus has two seats. Now here comes the huge difference. The price. So the Tesla Roadster is... Uh, at a bargain price, bargain basement price of only $200,000. Which of course is not exactly cheap, but is very cheap compared to the, the Lotus. The Lotus is, they're saying the starting price is about $2 million. So you can get 10 roasters for one Lotus. Hmm, not exactly a bargain price, but there is more to money, I mean, there's more to picking your car than just pure performance. 
just looking at the pictures, you can see that the Lotus is a much nicer looking car. The fit and finish on the Lotus, even though I haven't seen it in person, it's going to crush the Tesla. If the Tesla will be fine, you know, it'll be a nice car compared to your Honda Accord or something. But there's going to be a night and day difference when you get inside that Lotus and when you get inside that Tesla. It's, it's, it's going to be no comparison. The Lotus is going to be, it's like a nest. It's like, oh, it's like going to some kind of very fancy hotel. You know, I don't know. I don't go to fancy hotels, so I don't even know what name one of one. But anyways, it's like the Ritz versus an Hotel 6 quality wise. And you know, Motel 6 is fine. You know, it's they're usually pretty clean, they're comfortable, they're fine. But it's not the Ritz. You know, it's not glamorous. It's not, you know, it's 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 a whole other level, put it that way. And even the exterior, the fit and finish design, the look, the material, the lotus have it killed. But you know, we're talking Two million bucks. This better be nice, right? So, so if you have the money, I got a feeling that if money was no object, you're gonna probably rather have the Lotus. But if you're average Joe, you can pretty much sell your house and buy yourself a Roadster, right? Anybody can do that. Dumb, be dumb, but still, you can do it. You, most people can't sell their house and buy the Lotus. So I guess it's somewhat more attainable for your average Joe, because your average Joe is not gonna, I mean, you could, if you're a fanatic, and you wanna really save your money and spend all your money on a car, you can basically do it. But with the Lotus, it don't even matter. But anyhow, that's the comparison between the two. I, like I said, I believe that Lotus is holding back on the numbers. I just can't see how a 2,000 horsepower car can't go faster zero to 60. I think what they're doing is they're gonna wait. They're gonna wait till it's right about to come out, or even when it does come out, and then have it sit right next to a roadster and crush it in every way. Except for probably range. But like I said, range to me is not that important because you drive around all day long. You go home, you plug it in, and there you have it. You're good to go. So 250 miles an hour, 250 miles range is plenty of range, especially for a like a sporty car. You know, and then if you charge it in nine minutes, even better. Then you can even try, you can drive for a while, throw it in there, use the bathroom and come back and you're charged and ready to go. All right, well, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. Paul's Take, and that's my take on the Tesla Roaster versus the Lotus of the... <clears throat>